Hello there and welcome back to the studio. Today we finally have a palette that we can hold with the water mixable oil paints. This is just a uh, very inexpensive acrylic um, acrylic handheld palette. What I did was I sanded it. So see how it, this used to be clear, but what I did was sand it. Uh, I kind of got that idea from Bob Ross. You know, like in Bob Ross's videos, he had an acrylic palette or some kind of plastic palette and then he would sand it so that it wouldn't glare. But I also sanded the uh, corners of it just so it's a little more comfortable, like a little more smooth to hold. And so on the palette here we have titanium white, mixing white, burnt umber, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and over here we have water, uh, to clean out the brushes now and then and over here in this on the top of this little deli cup We have our medium and this is the medium that I like to use these days only my, my only complaint with this though Is that it takes its sweet time to dry so I had to put the painting in the car and it's summer over here So like I don't know like 90 degrees outside and keeping the painting in the car is really the only way to get the painting to dry uh, within at least a couple days. So again, I do like the consistency of this medium, the Holbein uh, Linseed Aqua Duo, but I am going to be looking for uh, a more fast drying medium to use instead of this. And if you don't mind that the painting, uh, your water mixable oil paint using that medium will take, I don't know, at least four to five days to dry to the touch like this, then it's the perfect medium for you to use. But uh, for me, uh, the fact that it, I had to put it in the car for it to dry, especially when we got into the colors, was kind of not such a good thing. So I'm going to have the camera in this kind of angle, okay? So you can see the still life object and the painting at the same time. So now we are going to enter into the perceptual color stage. So that means that we're going to be looking at um, you know, first it was the local color stage, okay, these are very basic colors, but now we're going to look for more, um, you know, more elaborate colors. So, let's see, hopefully you can see the, uh, the palette. So I'm going to use the cadmium red, and these are the same paints that I had, by the way. I just uh, put them in the freezer. So I'm also testing out how these uh, water mixables work after being in the freezer for several days. So I see that I want a little more, let's see, more burnt sienna. And my theory is that, um, you know, if I keep them in the freezer long enough, they'll start drying a little bit, and then that'll actually speed up the drying time. I don't know, that's a theory. So a little bit more of the titanium white, a little bit of the alizarin, sorry, the uh, ultramarine blue, mixing white. That's a little bit closer. And the reason I like to have a handheld palette as opposed to the, um, you know, the palette that I had before on the table, the glass palette is that I like to be able to hold it. Now I know you can't see it in the angle that I have you, but I like to be able to hold it and you know compare what I'm looking at to the color that I'm mixing. And I think it just it's a lot faster that I can you know move the palette around as opposed to having to always reach down and mix. But it's just my preference. Your preference could be different, and that's okay. So it needs to be a little bit uh, more pink. Now I do think it's, a, it's probably a good idea to start to put in more values. So we're gonna use the Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, a little bit of the Ultramarine, ultramarine blues that is. And um, we're gonna put some values here, okay, for the drapery, for the folds of the drapery. Now I do still think that I have it a little too bright. A little more of the burnt sienna. Trying to get this color and I'm going to be working in color spots, even though I just painted in, you know, like a large shape. I'm now going to start to relate these color spots. So I'm going to get a larger brush, a little bit of the ivory black, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green, 
And um, we're going to look for a little bit of a darker shape now. Back here. Okay. Softer edge over here. So I kind of want it to be a little bit darker, cooler, though not too green. So a lizard to the rescue. Okay. I'm not going to fill in the entire thing, but I'm just going to be, you know, relating these color spots to you. And now a different area to look for um, the shadow tone in relation to this turning plane. So I'm going to use a different brush and I don't know, whatever brush, suppose this one. So I'm going to use the mixing white, ivory black, ultramarine blue. I'm going to try not to use any medium just yet. A little bit more of the mixing white. See right there, that's a little bit too blue. So now we're going to use the yellow ochre. And notice I didn't mix up the color value web um, just because all of these colors are going to be much more scattered now. So we're working with color spots. Okay. So now I have to really balance my eyes back and forth. Now I think that that might be a little too light in value. So let's just use this one, a little bit of this. Okay, let's see. It's a little closer. Sharper edge over here. Now I'm going to get a different brush. I'm going to have a lot of brushes. For the, um, for the perceptual color stage, so for this stage, uh, you're going to see that I use, I tend to use a lot more brushes just so I can move along faster. So that's probably going to be too blue. So I'm going to use a little a bit of the cadmium yellow. And as you can see, this still isn't the brightest value because it's still not as light as the titanium white. But you can see there, it's much lighter. So we have a much lighter plane over here. Okay, so again, we're working all around with these spots of color. And now, uh, with this same color that I had, I'm actually going to uh, scatter this color down here. I'm just going to let the shadow tone be relatively flat. But over here, uh, just as we reach this area, it's starting to hit. Um, let's put this in first. It's starting to hit a little bit of reflected light, so we might as well just mix that up right away since we are now in the perceptual color stage. You know, we're thinking more about color now. Though value is, of course, always going to be extremely important. Now the concern is really in these color relationships. And that is, you know, how am I going to relate this red to this one? So um, let's just get the brush with the red. Now for this area here, let's just start to compare them now. And this layer is going to set us up for the selective render where we'll be able to go in and uh, with a more decisive mark we'll be able to you know, pick and choose which areas we want to bring into focus. Okay, so that's getting a little darker, a little more pink. So a little more pink in here. Now again, I don't want to make this the same as this. So I really have to squint my eyes and sit really far back uh, to be able to make that distinction. So a little more of the um, alizarin crimson permanent, ultramarine blue. Now the value alone is going to help us out because the value is very dark. That might be too dark, so we're going to use the uh, cadmium orange. A little more cadmium orange. And I'm, I'm really, uh, you know, trying to show you how I work in between uh, color shapes. So I think that this one is pretty good. Now I just have to get this shape to work. Now the first thing that comes to mind is probably the tone. So that might actually need to get darker. So let's make it darker and a little more blue. 
But then, of course, that's going to lead us to another area, which is over here. So I'm going to get, if I have another brush, I'm going to get a larger brush off camera here. I'm just mixing the ivory black, the alizarin crimson, and the burnt umber. Alizarin crimson, ivory black, burnt umber. Okay, a little more alizarin crimson. Okay. So now you see all of these color spots that we're relating here, 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 all around, okay? Now there's gonna be a much warmer dark tone. It's kind of in the burnt sienna family. So burnt sienna, sap green, a little bit of the cadmium red. There we go. It's a lot of warm reflected light going on in here. Okay. Now over here, since I have this dark note, I should probably put this one. So again, darker shape right here. And if you'll notice, um, you know, if you follow along with me with my, uh, you know, my other painting videos, the ones that are with the traditional oil paints, I didn't oil out and uh, I've been kind of confused at how to do that with water mixables, to be honest. Um, so let us know in the comments if you oil out. And um, if you don't know what oiling out means, it, it just means putting a layer of oil into a spot to bring back the color. I think that this color is actually fine. I didn't feel like I needed to oil out. Uh, but I did oil out a couple times in some of my practice paintings. And um, I found that the, the finish had a weird, I don't know, like a weird sticky consistency that I didn't quite like. So now we're going to go ahead and put in this plane here. Now it needs to be lighter. Um, than this, so we still have quite a lot of room. Now I might as well just use the same brush. Let's just get this color here. And again, we want to preserve the awesome factor, which is we want the underpainting to show through a little bit. So just like that, and that'll be fine. And now I'm going to compare uh, this little reflected light. So this is reflecting onto here. So it's going to be a little bit more blue kind of in between these two shapes. Okay, uh, but it's still gonna be fairly dark. And uh, it's not that blue. So we're gonna edit that color a little bit. There we go. A little bit cooler. Now the, um, the edge quality in the reflected light is kind of important to keep things rather soft. So that might be a little too, too sharp. So I'm just softening a clean, what was a clean and dry synthetic brush. So now I want to relate this half tone. So first thing I'm going to do um, let's look for the brush that I had for this. So I, yeah, that's the same brush. So this is the area where I was mixing. So a little more titanium white. We're going to lighten this shape up even more. And again, when you know that you're going to add more and more layers, it's okay if you go in lighter and brighter. Um, that is lighter and softer. All right, so now I see that this light plane is actually a little bit warmer in relation to this one. So I'm going to put a little bit of the uh, cadmium yellow, titanium white. The value is very similar, but the color is a little bit different, a little closer to the yellowish family. I don't know why I just put yellow ochre in there, but all right, so let's try this one out. There we go. So I, I see it to be, I perceive it to be a little bit 
uh, warmer. And again, the perceptual color stage, you know, by its name, you're working on your color perception. You know, how you perceive a given color to look. Now, I'm not trying to match the color, rather I'm trying to relate this color to this color, okay? And now, uh, with this brush that I was using to soften, I'm going to actually get this a uh, little bit of a bluer tone here. I'm going to get this light. Now as far as the still life object is concerned, um, I've been moving the still life around like I didn't tape anything or anything like that. So I'm not really that, you know, concerned about it being in the same spot all the time. So I think that's good for that. Now let's go ahead and get a different brush if we have one. Uh, I think this one will do. So we're going to get a little bit of a kind of in between. So ultramarine blue, a little bit of this color here, some sap green. Okay, so that is a little too blue. So let's get some of the red here. Till I get a uh, a tone that I that I like, or at least one that is a little bit more gray, but still like uh, it's kind of hard to describe. It's cooler than this, and it's darker than this, but it's not as kind of cool as this. So it's kind of very, uh, very strange, a strange value to describe, and color, of course. All right. So now I'm just going to, with the same brush, work up the value range only slightly. So now you'll see, hopefully, um, this is starting to get more realistic, so to speak, starting to have more volume. And that is because we are actually pushing that shadow, sorry, that, uh, that's not a shadow, that half tone. You're probably wondering when I'm going to put this design. I don't know, I don't think I'm going to put it in this layer. I might let that be for the um, selective render. Now the, the, um, the way you handle these value transitions from here to here and from here to here, uh, it's, it's actually easier and I recommend you practice with these kind of objects. With very simple and clear looking still life objects, because when you get to paint the human figure or, you know, like a portrait of someone, you're going to see very similar types of transitions of uh, value, but you're going to then have the complexity of, you know, trying to get the likeness of the model and then all that stuff. So this is actually what I would recommend you do if you're trying to improve on your values and your overall painting technique. So I am kind of closing up the form here a little bit, meaning I'm applying the entire value range. But I'm not really trying to, you know, if I were trying to finish up the form, then this tone, I would definitely put more emphasis on that tone, which I probably will, maybe right about now. So I'm going to get a little bit of a in-between value. Just get this value over here. Okay, and that is the shape, uh, the tone for the dark light. Now I'm going to use the light brush to help to uh, kind of blend, turn the form a little bit. Like so. And now I'm going to get the 
shadow tone brush. So this one here. I'm going to very carefully make sure that this follows the form. You know, what's going on here is much more important than what's going on there. So I'm applying much more of a conceptual, um, I'm, I'm using more concept-based tools right now than perceptual, even though this is a perceptual color stage. I am trying to close up this curve a little bit. And then we'll start to relate some of these colors. And the reason that I'm closing up uh, the forms here is so that when we come back in the last stage, we'll be able to add on all of those little uh, nuance shapes or those little details. Even though, even though the word detail makes me cringe. Now I'm going to get another brush and just soften this edge. Okay, now you hopefully you can see it's starting to look even more dimensional. And all of this was water mixable oil paints. Pretty neat. Definitely, definitely this edge. Almost forgot. We definitely want to soften this edge. Okay. I think I'm missing a little accent here. So let's get a little more ivory black. I'm actually going to use the medium now. Haven't been using the medium much though. I'll put in this little dark plane. There we go. Okay. Now I want to relate these shapes one another. One another excuse me. So I can definitely see that I can push that uh, that greenish tone. So I'm going to get the cadmium yellow, sap green, mixing white, sap green, cadmium yellow, mixing white. And it's so nice to be able to hold a palette and mix these colors. Oof, that's way too bright. Or light in value. Still too light. So ultramarine blue. There we go. Only in certain areas, though. I'm not going to lighten everything up. And you know how I like to work in odd numbers? So one, two, and three. And now with the same brush, I'm gonna make a darker, more bluish tone. So the ultramarine blue, the burnt umber. So we want a more bluish tone here, like so. Hopefully that gets the form to pop a little bit more. And now I see a very nice and you know distinct uh, scarlet color there. So I'm gonna actually have to clean off. Of, nope, never mind. I do have a brush still. Still have a brush that I can use. All right. So now let's get the cadmium orange, the mixing white. A little bit of the. Lizard and Crimson, just a touch of it, and a touch of Yellow Ochre. All right, hopefully we can get this color. Yep, it's much more vibrant, this color right here. And then there's some darker, kind of more earthy pink colors. Burnt Sienna. Not that dark though, so let's just use this. See how that goes. Yep. It's a little better. And I'm only going to put a few shapes there to help to put in the color variation. 
titanium white into this, cadmium yellow. I want it to be light, but it's nowhere near as light as this. Actually, it's pretty close, but it's not as light. A little bit lighter there. More of a light plane over here. Another light shape here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is get a larger brush and I'm going to fill in that dark mixture that we had, so this one, for the background. All right, now that we've painted in the background, I think that the uh, this shape over here, I have a little too, kind of like a generic red. So I'm gonna go ahead and get another brush. I'm gonna try to mix up a little bit of a purple color, so the uh, ultramarine blue, Alizarin, crimson, mixing white. I'm going to just tint it a little bit with the purple. Just kind of letting the, um, the paint mix with the layer that's already on here. And I did just flatten out that tone that I had before, and that's okay. I think that's a little closer actually, now that we did that. I had to drop down the temperature. It was way too kind of generic, um, like a generic red. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fix the mistake I just made. So with the paper towel, just erase down there. And I'm gonna put the, um, the accent marks, I'm going to use a little bit of the medium over here just so this doesn't look like a floating still life object. A little bit more red. There we go. And of course these areas need to have a a different color. So I'm going to clean this brush off with the water. Now we're going to get into the cadmium orange all into here. I'm going to use the medium. So something that's a little bit more orangey. There we go. I'm going to put in these little shapes. So a little more medium. Let's see if we can add a glaze. I think we can actually. Glazing with water mixables? Is that a thing? I think it is. I'm curious to know how long this will take to dry now. So I'm pushing it a little bit warmer than I see there. Um, what I'm going to do is glaze the same color onto here. Whoops. Need a little more medium so that glaze can work. All right, so now what I'm gonna do with the same brush, I'm just gonna clean it off with the water, I'm trying to get all the water off. Titanium white, cadmium yellow. I wanna push these highlights. One over here. One, two, three, here. A little more of a greenish tone. This highlight to me appears a little more kind of green. And I've dealt with this kind of gold color before. Um, you know, when you want to make something that's gold, I think it's a good idea to try to glaze it. So make something that's a little bit orangey first, like what we have here. And then after this layer dries, I'm going to uh, go back into it with the cooler tones because the gold is kind of a strange combination of yellow and green, if you'll notice. So, yeah, when this dries, I'm gonna go into it with the uh, a little more of a greenish tone. 
think we can push this shadow though. There's a little bit of a cooler shadow. Let's get this purplish tone. Why not? All into here. And there is a cast shadow here. I very nearly forgot. So let's get some of this color. Cast shadows are usually darker than form shadows, usually. I mean, not always the case, but it is the case here. So again, this is a cast shadow. It's being casted from this area here. This area is lighter than this because this is the form shadow. And again, there's a cast shadow over here. That edge is just bothering me. I think it's because I need to put a darker shape there. So burnt sienna, burnt umber, a little bit of the medium. Just needed a little darker tone here. And I think this will probably be one of the last shapes I'll put in because we've already addressed all of the large uh, color relationships. So remember, with the perceptual color path or stage, um, you really want to think more about color. You want to relate color areas or color spots to one another. And then, you know, after you get those color relationships, you know how I had to relate this to this, or I had to relate this to just a generic red. I had to relate this kind of scarlet color. And then I had to relate this red to this one, though they're still kind of similar, but at least I have them uh, differentiated a little bit further now. So again, relating the colors to one another and making sure to maintain the awesome factor <laughs> that is under here. You can still see uh, the remains of the underpainting. And again, it's been wonderful to hold a palette. I hope that the footage came out all right. I did try to show you some of the mixtures, um, you know, as I was going back and forth, but I, I don't know. I hope the footage came out well. I need a cameraman. I wouldn't really know. Um, you know, I won't know until it comes time to editing. So hopefully it turns out well. That being said, I really hope that today's episode helps you out. And if you would like to support this channel even more, I have a Patreon account. That being said, always remember in a world that can be so negative and so negative, so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I truly do hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow. And it's time for our new patron shout out. So thank you so much. Thank you so much to Ken Walker. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Ingrid Carlson. And thank you so much. And thank you so much to William A. Hamilton. Thank you so much for becoming supporters of this YouTube channel, to becoming patrons via Patreon. Your support really does mean so much to me and it helps so much. Thank you so much. I really hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.